right, here is part two. Uh, I left off with Evan Bourne being uh, traded in the post-Donald Trump trade to Raw and pinning Randy Orton, getting the pin instead of Mark Henry. Uh, basically, this would make Evan Bourne look very, very uh, strong. Basically, I mean, coming as, he, he's the guy that was the ECW champion, saying they could hang with it, one of the two world champions, makes the ECW look, title look even better because he held it. And then he just got basically the first, one of his first big wins of uh, his, his career uh, there. So uh, he would also be, uh, all right, let me hold up, change something. Okay, so you guys can see it better. Um, so basically, one week after the trade on Raw, Bourne gets his uh, gets a rematch against Orton again, non-title, but he pins him this time with a roll up again. Basically, make him look strong, build towards a match at the Bash, which would delay the Triple H Randy Orton feud a little bit longer. But I think that would sell Triple H's injury a lot better. And it's a fresh matchup to see Orton and Bourne have never faced in a big match statement, so I give him a fresh match for pay per view, which I think a lot of people would like to see. But Bourne pins, uh, Bourne gets pinned by Orton after an RKO. Uh, at the bash in the WWE title match, but Bourne has to prove in this match, and Orton, I think, and Bourne can pick a very good match together, proves that he can stay with Randy Orton and the WWE champion, which raises his which raises his uh, claim that he can definitely do a lot of stuff on uh, Raw. So, basically now, J July of 2009 rolls around, uh, around night of champion time, Bourne does not lose again on Raw until... Uh, Born actually born. I don't, I don't have to lose it all. Born wins a series of matches on Raw and and gets a spot in the United States Title Six Pack Challenge match at Night of Champions instead of the Miz. I felt that this role for the Miz wouldn't have worked anyway because coming off the feud with Cena, like you put him in a United States Title match, just makes him look kind of stupid. Because like after coming off the feud with Cena, you go right after the United States Title it looks kind of bad. So Born will be in the match instead of the the Miz. I'd have him beat like Chavo Guerrero and a slew of people. Maybe bring in a couple jobbers. Uh, I don't know couple enhancement talents, sorry, uh, so, just basically just have Evan Bourne look strong way into the Night of Champions six-pack challenge, uh, but I would have Kofi Kingston still win in the six-pack challenge and retain his title, but he's not going to pin Bourne, Bourne gets several near, near falls in the match, but, and, and look, makes it look like he would have won if it were a one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one match for the title against any other people, so basically, Bourne and Kingston do not have m that much interaction, uh, for whatever reason, and, um, what's next? Evan Bourne, uh, also in the match, looks impressive, and just basically, even though he did not win, make him look good in defeat, if that makes any sense. Then on August, August 2009, uh, uh, you'd have Evan Bourne beat Jack Swagger, uh, Carlito, and MVP on three straight weeks on Raw to earn a United States title match at SummerSlam against Kofi Kingston one on one, and at SummerSlam 2009, you would have Bourne beat Kofi for the United States title in a high flying match. Uh, basically, he's an United States champion, and I'll explain the importance of him winning this time with the Shooting Star Prize. That shows that even if someone takes away the regular Shooting Star Prize, he has ways of winning matches. Basically, shows he is multi dimensional and he can uh, win matches in ways that aren't the Shooting Star, a regular Shooting Star Prize, even though he is doing a Springboard version. And plus, a Springboard Shooting Star Prize is really, really nice, and I don't think that's he has done it before, so. That'd be really, really cool to see here, and he wins an SS title and is the new United States champion. Then, basically, after SummerSlam, Kofi, uh, you have Kofi Kingston come out on the Raw after SummerSlam. I actually think that's, this is still in August. Um, never mind. Oh, i got to change that in a minute. But uh, on the Raw after SummerSlam, uh, Kofi stays that he will cash in his automatic rematch clause against Bourne at the Breaking Point pay-per-view. Uh, and on that same Raw, you have Carlito beat uh, Evan Bourne to make Carlito look kind of strong as a future uh, contender to the United States title for Evan Bourne. After uh, the match, Carlito states that he should get the United States title against Evan Bourne at breaking point and not Kofi Kingston. So then, uh, Carlito will uh, lose to um, uh, Kofi Kingston by only by disqualification because Carlito attacks Kofi with a ladder. That's a little bit of foreshadowing. But Bourne makes the save on Kofi, but Kofi is still injured very, very badly. Uh, and basically, this is the point to make Kofi look like he cannot compete for uh, breaking point. So Carlito will get the title instead. So basically, because of Carlito's actions, Carlito inserts himself into the United States title match for breaking point. Uh, and then Carlito accepts the match with Bourne lays out. Basically, set it up like that. Kind of a little money few, which I think is kind of cool. 
Uh, breaking point. Bourne beats Carlito by a roll-up to retain after the match. Kofi Kingston kind of comes through the crowd or having come through the entranceway and jump Carlito from behind, which Bourne tries to stop to say, like, okay, I beat him, so you don't really need to do that anymore. And then Bourne, and then uh, Kofi clotheslines Evan Bourne, kind of have him play tweener here. And then hits a trouble in paradise on Evan Bourne, makes him, because he's the United States champion, he wants to get a head up on him. So I think Kofi Kingston kind of will play a little bit more of a heel persona here, but I, I'd have him be tweener for the next couple of months, which you'll see. Uh, so, and I think, uh, even the, and I think I've created kind of a, there are two weeks in between uh, Breaking Point and, uh, I think you have like two Raws in between Breaking Point and, uh, Hell in a Cell. So, for that point, I'm gonna have a kind of a mini few, I think, would actually generate a lot of stuff with the pay-per-view instead of just basically having rematches at Hell in a Cell. So, um, Bourne addresses, uh, the next Raw, Bourne addresses the audience about what happened at Breaking Point. And what he wants for Hell in a Cell and next week on Raw, he basically states that, uh, uh, I'm going to go into promo mode now. It's, Bourne is basically like, last night I beat Carlito at, ba uh, at breaking point. After the match, Kofi Kingston did all this stuff. Uh, basically, I want revenge on both of them for whatever reason. Carlito, I didn't beat definitively, I want to prove my name. And Kofi Kingston, I got to get revenge on him, he just got under my skin, did something he didn't need to do, and I just want to face him really bad. I actually want to face both of them really bad, so next week on Raw, a triple threat match for the United States title, myself versus Kobe Kingston versus Carlito, and so it happens. Uh, that match ends in a no contest over Carlito attacks, both of them at the ladder, setting up a rematch for Hell in a Cell, a ladder match for the United States title, a three-way ladder match for the United States title, Evan Bourne, Kobe Kingston, Carlito, that match would be freaking awesome in my book. Just, I think it's a little bit fresh of a new matchup, and it just uh, you haven't seen like a triple threat singles match for the next title in a, especially in a ladder match for like in forever. So, and I would have Bourne go over both of them, and they just put on a crazy match, have crazy spots, just like, even though there are three Hell in a Cell matches, I don't know, you can incorporate kind of, do have some brutal spots involving a ladder, which they wouldn't use in a Hell in a Cell match usually anyway, even though they didn't edge an Undertaker. Uh, but you just have, th th these three go out there and just prove their name. Basically, that's, that's what you do and have Bourne look very, very strong here. Uh, which I think I think he would definitely look very, very strong after this. Because you have him go on and put in a great match at Hell in a Cell. Which basically uh, put, puts that name out there more and basically says that uh, with the skills he has now, a lot of fans remembered he was in the Bunny the Bank ladder match at WrestleMania 25. So he probably could have won that match now. So have him kind of build his store top. T towards the main event, even with the United States title, which is a mid-card title. So then, uh, that next Raw, Kofi Kingston comes out uh, and says he never got his run-on-one rematch with Evan Bourne for the world for the title. This isn't kind of a face way, which is very true. So, and then he challenges Bourne to a match at Bragging Night for the title, which Evan Bourne accepts. So basically, just having the one-on-one -on -one rematch from the uh, match at SummerSlam uh, at Bragging Rights 2009, uh, which Evan Bourne will go over him. Uh, with a shooting star press. After the match, I shake hands, kind of reinstating Kobe Kingston as a face, getting ready for his feud with Randy Orton, and then uh, Evan Bourne would go on to bigger and better things. Um, next, I'd have Bourne beat Sheamus on a, a first United States title match on Raw that actually has a finish. Uh, for United States title beats, beats uh, Sheamus, who Sheamus uh, right now is a heel, but later I, I will turn to face and comes back for a little while in my storyline. Um, but after this match, Sheamus does attack Bourne, hits the carbon footprint type of thing he does, then the crucifix bomb thing. I don't remember what they call it. So basically lays Bourne out. The next uh, Monday non-title match, Bourne beats Sheamus again. This time with a roll-up, but again, Sheamus attacks Bourne, setting up that Bourne wants revenge on Sheamus. He'll do anything for it. So he born, he joins Team Morrison, even though he's not a captain, for the Survivor Series match, because uh, Sheamus is on Team Miz. So... Uh, you have Bourne, basically the exact same match, because Evan Bourne was on Team Morrison, so basically you have the exact same match in this time, but Team Morrison does beat Team Miz, with Morrison and Bourne being the sole survivors. Uh, that, that makes the Intercontinental Champion, John Morrison, look very, very strong, and the United States Champion, uh, Evan Bourne, look very strong as well. Um, so basically just reason the prestige of both those titles together, which I think would be a very good idea. Uh, and basically, uh, stay tuned for Part 3. I'll, I'll, uh, you guys will see it in a minute. Bye-bye.